What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Up Before You podcast with me, Connor Warman. Thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy lives to listen to this show. If you have been a longtime listener and enjoy the show, please share with family and friends. And as always, if you don't like the show, please tell me. If you have the time to do so, please leave me a rating or review wherever you listen. All right, today on the show, we have Dave Womack. Dave is the former defensive coordinator for Ole Miss, who also coached in Arkansas, South Carolina, Missouri, and many others. Now he is enjoying the retired life in Mississippi. Let's go. going on mr womack how you doing connor you having a good day yeah how about you been great so far a little church this morning yeah nice what do you guys do on a sunday uh you know a lot of times after church we'll sometimes we'll go to eat and sometimes we'll go to a movie and sometimes we just hang out at the house yeah because you're retired now right i've been retired for a little over two years and enjoying every bit of it so what's that like how how is it different <laughs> <laughs> what do you I, do I mean, it's like totally different. I can remember uh, retiring a couple of years ago and then waking up the first couple of weeks. It was like, uh, you know, wake up like you used to, which I get in the office around 6.15, 6.30 in the morning. And uh, now I hardly ever get up before nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been great. I mean, we've been able to travel a lot. We've been... Uh, out-of-state trips. I think we've been on 41 out-of-state trips, including Italy and Hawaii and Boston and New York and Washington, D.C. and on and on. Um, traveled a lot. Then I, I like to hunt and fish, so I fill my days pretty quickly. <laughs> so that's obviously a change of pace from the coaching lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize in the coaching profession, which I did for 38 years, it's Oh, gosh, from uh, July until February, it's seven days a week. And like I said, I used to get into office fairly early, and we usually leave somewhere around 9 or 9.30 at night, seven days a week, you know, for most of the year. And then, uh, you know, you'd only have, I think we used to say, uh, nine weekends off a year total. So uh, it was pretty demanding, but I loved doing it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, where'd you grow up? Gosh, uh, I was born in Springfield, Missouri, and uh, only lived there till I was five. My father worked for General Motors, and um, he took a job in Decatur, Illinois. So, I started my education in uh, Decatur, and uh, I guess we were there for, gosh, I don't know how many years, uh, several years, and then we moved to Peoria, Illinois. And uh, 1969, we moved to where I really call home, which is back to Missouri. We live uh, near Branson, Missouri. It's called Kimberling City, Missouri. And uh, it's on a lake, Table Rock Lake. And my dad had a service center. He worked on boats and motors and uh, had a little bit of sails in the front. Uh, so I guess those three places is where mm. I grew up. Hey, you have a pretty thick southern accent from being from Missouri. Really? Yeah, well, I think so. I think so. Uh, we've lived, gosh, I mean, I think we've lived in um, 10 different places, but most of it's been in the South. Mm -hmm. And um, I never thought of myself really having a strong Southern accent, but uh, but I know my grandkids do. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what, what did you grow up playing? Uh, what kind of sports did you play? Everything. I mean, uh, I guess, you know, baseball as a kid, you know, before I really got into football or maybe old enough to play football, uh, I loved playing baseball. And I gosh, I played it from, I think, five or six years old all the way up. I played in a semi-pro league. I uh, wasn't good enough to go to the big leagues, but uh, played baseball. And uh, through high school, I went to a small high school in Missouri. It's called Reed Spring High School, 69 people in my graduating class. So I got to play all sports. I mean, did track and 
uh, basketball. I like basketball, baseball, and football. So did you? You went on to play in college, right? I did. I did. I went uh, to a school in uh, uh, Southwest Missouri. It was uh, called Missouri Southern. It's in Joplin, Missouri, and uh, I was there from 1974 and graduated in '78. And uh, then I went on from there and uh, went to Arkansas as a graduate assistant. So right after you get done playing, you go right into coaching? Uh, yeah, you know, it was interesting because my senior year in college, I mean, I pretty much knew what I wanted to do. I actually knew that in high school, knew I wanted to be a coach. Uh, a lot of educators in our family, by the way. But um, I sent out, I don't know, 40 or 50 uh, applications to be a graduate assistant at different places. And, and uh, I got three or four offers at small schools and it was late in the summer and I ended up taking a graduate assistantship not in uh, football, not in athletics, but in uh, health, physical education and recreation at the University of Arkansas uh, just because I wanted my master's to come from there. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to Mrs. Womack before this and she went to Arkansas. So is that yeah. where you guys met? Yeah. We did. Um, I'm four years older than her. I was um, getting my master. I guess she had started. I didn't meet her there until the last two years that I was at Arkansas. But uh, that's exactly where we met. We met at a basketball game, or uh, our first date was on a basketball game, and she didn't seem to know which end the basketball game was going on. She was always looking at the end. Maybe she's looking for friends or something. But, uh, <laughs> love of my life, uh, 34 years of marriage. So you mentioned that you Arkansas was a place you wanted to be from the start. Well, <clears throat> my mother's from Arkansas originally, yeah. and uh, my dad's from Texas, so we had quite a controversy there. And, uh, you know, I wanted to go to a little bit bigger school. Missouri Southern was small. I wanted uh, an opportunity to work into being a graduate assistant. So when I was uh, as a graduate assistant in the HBR department at Arkansas, I'll get my master's. Um, I volunteered on in the strength and conditioning program at University of Arkansas. And when I did that, um, you know, I would sweep the floors and mop and clean and help and all that other stuff. And back then they only had a, a head strength coach who actually coached on the field as well. But uh, they had one graduate assistant. So I volunteered and helped. And a guy by the name of John Stuckey, who was pretty good in the a uh, pretty big name in the strength and conditioning field, kind of uh, took me under his wing, uh, him along with the, uh, uh, what am I trying to say, the uh, people that were in charge of the medical there, the training room, if you will. And uh, those two guys uh, gave me an opportunity, and I was there as a volunteer for like four months, and uh, the graduate assistant, became the head strength coach at Indiana, and I got the graduate assistantship. And uh, from there, I worked myself into um, an opportunity. Coach Holtz, Lou Holtz, was the head coach at Arkansas, and got to know him, worked out with him. He wanted to come out and come down and work out. And he let me be a graduate assistant um, a couple of years later on the field. And that's where I got started in football. I had no idea he was at Arkansas ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he... He followed Frank Broles, and uh, he'd been a head coach at the New York Jets and obviously some uh, other colleges, NC State, uh, William & Mary before that, and uh, maybe even Kent State. But, uh, but uh, yeah, he had he'd been uh, – he was the head coach from 77 till maybe 82 or 83 at Arkansas. Wow, uh, so do you still talk to him today? No, I really don't. Uh, every once in a while, I'll see him. Uh, mostly, you know, he might be speaking at a bowl game or speaking somewhere, and I always go up and he remembers me, but I don't talk to him on a, yeah. you know, huh. even a yearly basis. Wow. All right, well, I have this list of all these places you've coached. Or okay. Some of them. So you've been Good luck with that. <laughs> Arkansas. These are, I'm just listed like some of the... the you want me to give it been, to you in order? You've been everywhere. <laughs> Arkansas, Missouri, UNLV, Southern Miss, South Carolina, Georgia Tech, Arkansas State, Ole Miss. Yeah. Uh, and there's, I know there's more than that. Yeah. Um, 
I know you missed my first defensive coordinator job. Everybody's familiar with Bemidji State University. Yeah, I saw that. In northern Minnesota. Uh, but I think you hit probably most of them there. So, just, and you, you were at Arkansas two different times. I was. Uh, I was a graduate assistant there. Like I said, the first two years in the strength and conditioning program. And then the next two years, uh, I actually coached on offense, uh, coaching quarterbacks and wide receivers uh, at Arkansas. And then um, right after that, I'd left and gone to Missouri, and that's when I switched to defense. But then I came back as a defensive coordinator uh, in 2000, so I was there for 2000 to 2004. So what was that like moving around all the time? Uh, you know what? you got to have um, – you know, a wife and a family that's supportive, and I was fortunate in that area. Um, Les, my wife, has always been behind us 100% in what we did, even through the good times and the, uh, the bad times. And, uh, and most of them were good times, but uh, uh, it's just you got to be able to learn how to pack things up and move and go. And, and it's, it was easy for me because, you know, I had built in people that I knew and I was working all the time for her. She always did a great job uh, with the kids and jumping in, being active in church and uh, all those things. So um, uh, I don't think the, the transitions were all that bad. Mm -hmm. So why all the transitions? Were you just always chasing new opportunities? or? Well, sometimes it was a positive thing and you're moving up the ladder and, uh, you know, obviously... Uh, when you start at Bemidji State and you go to Southwest Missouri State in Springfield and then to UNLV and working your way up Division One, and obviously I spent a lot of time in the SEC. So you want to try to get, um, you know, at the best schools with the best opportunities, um, you know, to uh, to advance in your career and also, you know, financially. So uh, and there's times that you get let go too and uh, you're moving the other direction so anytime in this profession uh, especially in the last 20 years I mean uh, there's an opportunity uh, for you to uh, to move a lot you know and uh, you have to do what's best for your family and that's what we always did mm -hmm. so what was your the favorite place you coached at oh gosh I mean there were so many of them I mean even I can remember when we first got married, going up to Menji, and uh, their, John Peterson was the head coach. They were a Mormon family, and they just took us under their wing. And they had all these kids, and he was great. And with that going in too much detail, detail uh, Jesse Branch at Southwest Missouri was one of my mentors and uh, uh, one of my favorite people to this day. Uh, Jeff Bauer at Southern Miss was awesome to work for, just a great man and great football coach and great to be around. Uh, uh, Hugh Freeze was great to work for. I enjoyed working with Hugh. He's a good man, and uh, I enjoyed the opportunity here. But, I mean, there was lots of good coaches. I'm leaving some out, I'm sure. But uh, there was lots of uh, good, good opportunities and good places, and probably – the one guy, I don't mean to be jumping around on you too much, but my high school basketball coach, his name was Doyle Price. Uh, Doyle's still alive. He lives uh, right outside of Webb City, Missouri. And he's probably the reason that I got into coaching. And uh, I just love the way that he handled things and people. And I watched him a lot, even when I was playing for him in high school. And thought, you know what, I'd like to be just like him. So uh, that kind of got me started. So I, I really had a lot of um, good people that I worked for and worked with over the years and uh, very thankful for that. So you said earlier that from a pretty young age you knew you wanted to coach. Okay, so then when you get into coaching football, how do you get into, like, I want to coach offense or I want to coach defense? Yeah, uh, you know, I think early on it was, uh, you know, kind of, where you would get the chance to do it. In other words, Coach Holtz asked me, he said, what do you want to work with? And I said, I don't care, whatever, wherever I can help the team the most. So he put me on offense. And then when I went to the University of Missouri, they had what was called a restricting earnings coach. And um, so I was actually going to make a little bit of money then. And um, 
they needed somebody to coach the defensive line. So um, ever since then, which that was 1982, I coached defense the rest of the way. And, you know, then you start to uh, specialize uh, if you want to be a coordinator. So I coached the defensive line there, and I coached uh, the defensive line at Bemenji and the first year at Southwest Missouri State. Then I started coaching the linebackers. And then over time, you know, I coached the secondary and I'd coached everything, you know, on defense. Most of the time being a coordinator, I never, when I was at Bemidji, I was young and I was kind of learning on the run. Uh, I went to Southwest Missouri as a defensive coordinator. And uh, really most of the years of my uh, coaching profession, I was a coordinator. There was a few years in there I wasn't, but most of the time I was a coordinator. So did you ever want to be a head coach? Yeah, when I was younger, I did. I think uh, I'm 62 now, and I think, uh, oh gosh, about 2008, 2009, uh, I just made a decision. I had a chance to be the head coach or an opportunity. I'm not saying I would have definitely been hired at Arkansas State, but uh, I chose to come here and uh, at uh, Ole Miss, I think that was in 11 or 12, end of 2011 season maybe and I just made a decision at that time that you know I was going to be a coordinator so I think when you get to a certain age you know you get kind of uh you want to get in stay involved with the players and what my my favorite part uh was dealing with the players and the x's and o's and the competition so uh, I didn't want to get away from that I'm not saying that every head coach is like that but most head coaches have to go speak here, go speak there. And that really wasn't my forte or what I wanted to do. So, Yeah, so that's an interesting point. You said <clears throat> as more of a coordinator, you get to work um, with the players. Yeah. I'm sure that's that's even more true when you're like a defensive line coach. So did you enjoy being like a defensive line or a linebackers coach more because you were like with the same group of guys all the time? Yeah, I mean, anytime you have a position, you know, you're just trying to capture that position and you're basically – responsible for uh, that group of players academically and on and off the field issues and uh, all that. As a coordinator, you're really responsible for all of them, but I never uh, was one of those walk-around coordinators. I was a coordinator who always coached a position. And, you know, I guess over the years, um, I like coaching it all, but probably coaching the secondary was probably my favorite in I was fortunate enough to, um, this is probably bragging, but put I put 50-plus guys into the NFL. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's rewarding to see those guys that have gone from not much sometimes uh, to being very successful and making a good salary and a good living. Who's the biggest name guy in that group? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't know. You know, um, one of my favorite, when I was at Southern Miss, uh, we had a guy by the name of Patrick Sertain. And Patrick's son, in fact, is a corner at Alabama right now. But Pat was a, uh, without a doubt, an overachiever. He was a quarterback. And we were going to put him on defense his freshman year. And he fought it and fought it. And probably two or three weeks into it, when he went to defense, he loved it, fell in love with it. And he was a great player. He was player of the year in the conference two times. And he was I think he was a six-time pro bowler and played in the NFL for 14 years. He was one of my favorites because he just uh, was so instinctive. Uh, but there's so many of them that were great players. I mean, I could just go on and on. Mm. So did you ever have any aspirations to try and go pro? Uh, as a player myself or no, as, as a, a coach? coach? You know, I never really did um, – have an interest in that. A lot of people have asked me that over the years. And it, to me, it's such a different game. The college game is so much more creative. Uh, the college game from week to week, you might be playing a triple option team one week. And then the next week you're playing five wide empty set, throwing it every down. And I love the challenge of, uh, having to adjust and, uh, you know, do that from week to week. And there's nothing wrong with the NFL, but it's, uh, it's, they're both football. They're both blocking and tackling. But, uh, I just thought, 
you know, the college game to me was more interesting. And even to this day, after being retired, I very rarely uh, watch pro football. I, I watch every college game I can watch, but I just love the college game. So you coached at South Carolina. Was that when Steve Spurrier was there? Yeah. He was there. Uh, I was there 05 and 06, and uh, that was his first two years there. And did, uh, he, did he recruit you in? Yeah. How did that work? Yeah. I mean, you know, you apply for a job or whatever usually, and and then, you know, several candidates will apply for the same job, and I got the secondary job uh, working for him there, and both 05 and 06. What was it like working under him? Uh, you know what? I mean, it was kind of different because, you know, everybody knew who Steve Spurrier was and all this and everything. And, uh, you know, I was used to, like, I, I don't want to put him down because I know he's, you know, been very successful. But he was kind of a fly by the seat of his pants. In other words, in practice, if we were out doing a drill, a pass skeleton, and if it was going good for the offense – you have time periods that's set in practice, so you're going to be at Pasco for 15 minutes or 20 minutes. If it was going good for him, it'd go 40 minutes. If it wasn't going so good, it'd go five minutes. So uh, structured, no, he wasn't. But uh, successful, yes, he was. Yeah. All right, so then a little later than that, you go to Arkansas State. Was that with Hugh Freeze? It was. It was. Um, uh, Hugh, I did not know Hugh. And uh, this was in 2010, I think, or 2011. And uh, we were actually, I was thinking about retiring back then. And uh, we were up in Missouri. And I had two friends. One's name was John Thompson. And um, he's coaching a high school up in Georgia. And Gus Malzon, who's the coach at Auburn, who I've known for several years, and they said, man, you've got to get a hold of Hugh and and uh, go to work for Hugh. He said, you guys just fit each other exactly. And uh, I said, well, you know, I don't know. And, you know, I've been used to coaching at some of the bigger schools and all that. And, you know, your pride kind of gets in your way. And mm-hmm. I thought, well, I don't know if I want to go back to little old Arkansas State. But, uh, man, I went over there and interviewed. And uh, I thought, Hugh, man – was very impressive and I knew he was going places and I loved Jonesboro. Both of us did. Uh, Our kids were gone by then. And uh, gosh, I thought we would be there a few years and we were only there for a total of nine months. I think I was hired in February or late January and we were gone by, gosh, I guess the end of November. Is that nine months? Something like that. But, uh, but uh, we were successful there at Arkansas State in that first year, and that was Hugh's first year, and then everybody headed to Ole Miss. Yeah, so he brought you to Ole Miss with him. He did. He did. Uh, he brought several coaches from Arkansas State, I'd say about half the staff, and uh, sometimes the head coach, you were supposed to keep people, and he kept a couple guys that were here and, and transitioned. But uh, I was his defensive coordinator, and we were – had taken a defense from 100 and something up to the top 20, and uh, we did get along. I thought we uh, worked very well with each other, and uh, he asked me to come with him, and I did. So how did that go down? How did Ole Miss want him so badly so quickly? I can remember in the middle of the season. um, Because he was a pretty new coach at that time. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a couple things there with Hugh is that, one, they had made that movie, uh, was it called Blindside? Oh, yeah, yeah. Blindside, and that movie was, that player was from his school. He was he, a high school coach, right? He was a yeah. high school coach in Tennessee. And then, uh, you know, he had gone on, gone on at Ole Miss as maybe football operations for a year, and then then I think he coached the receivers for a year, and then they let Ed Orgeron go. He was on Ed Orgeron's staff. And he went out to uh, he went to a small school up in Tennessee as a head coach, and then he went to San Jose, California, for a few months, and then he came back to Jonesboro as an offensive coordinator. And he was there for one season, and uh, I think they were pretty good on offense, but they had only won like four games. And uh, they let the head coach go at Arkansas State, 
and they hired Hugh uh, as the head coach. He hired me as a defense coordinator. We won. But, uh, gosh, all these places, Memphis wanted him. Southern Miss was open at the time and wanted him. Uh, there was another school, I'm not sure who it was, that wanted him. And then also No Miss was looking for a head coach. And um, that was into the Houston, that era. And uh, he had ties because he had coached at high school in Memphis uh, with Fred Smith. And uh, I think he knew the Manning family fairly well, Hugh I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think he interviews very well and interviewed well for that job. And they hired him. And uh, from there, you know, we went to Ole Miss and had quite a bit of success. Yeah, you guys definitely did. So, so when that when it came out that like he was coming here, was that like a big, like a big moment where you kind of like like we made it? Or well, I'd coached at you know Arkansas, uh -huh. and South Carolina, and some of the ACC schools, Georgia Tech, and so forth. And you know, I guess I felt like I'd made it a long time ago. <laughs> and, but uh, uh, I can remember him coming to my office and he said. Uh, Man, he said, I got these jobs. He said, which one do you think I ought to take? And, uh, you know, I coached at Southern Miss, and we were um, fortunate there and won several conference championships. And, and Memphis is down, and not what they are today. And uh, I said, man, I, I don't know about Ole Miss, Hugh. I said, that's a tough job. And he said, oh, man, come on. He says, we can do it. We'll turn it around there. And uh, so, you know, it was a challenge. So it was, it was, it was fun coming here and and uh, turning the culture back around to have some success and uh, very rewarding. Wasn't that his dream job? I think it was. I mean, um, I know there's a story that says on when he was married, and I think my wife tells this, I don't think he ever told me this, Hugh, but I think there was a um, time that maybe even on their honeymoon, they walked into Tennessee Stadium and he said he was gonna be the head coach there someday. But, you know, his family, uh, is right up the road in Independence, uh, Mississippi, which is about 45 minutes from here uh, in Oxford. And uh, uh, I, I would say, yeah, it was a dream job for him. Yeah, but like you said, Ole Miss was in rough shape at the time. Mm -hmm. So is the Ole Miss job like looked at among coaches as like a pretty big time job? Oh, yeah. The SEC and everything? Yeah, absolutely. It, it's tougher to win at some of the jobs. Like you take a Alabama or maybe an LSU or maybe some of the Texas schools, Notre mm -hmm. Dame, yada, yada. But you have some jobs that are, you know, kind of sell themselves. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, Alabama over the years, the history that they've had uh, at Alabama and certainly with Nick Saban, but uh, – you know, over the years, they've been highly successful, and which it's unique in Mississippi because you don't have you know any pro sports in Mississippi uh, to speak of. You know, there's no. I, I know there's some minor league teams and so forth, but it's unique to both Ole Miss and Mississippi State. So those two teams are always competing, as you well know, against each other at a high level for recruits and. Uh, you know, and even the best recruits, a lot of them are leaving the state and going to Alabama, and some going to LSU and other places as well. But, uh, you know, the key was to get on some of those kids and uh, get them from Mississippi State and keep them from those other uh, schools. But uh, I thought we also did a nice job of recruiting out of state and getting the players that we need in Florida and Georgia at times. And, and even uh, we got a great receiver out of Chicago, Illinois, I think our second year, our first year in recruiting, you know, you just kind of had to live with what the other staff had done, and we only had a few weeks. But that next year, then we signed the top receiver in the nation, the top defensive lineman, the top junior college player, and top offensive lineman. And uh, from there, you know, we really took off. Was that Naquan Treadwell and Laramie Tunzel, those guys? Yeah, that's exactly who it was. And Kim Dietschy. Kimdichi was the defensive lineman. There was a guy by the name of Hooks who was a junior college player of the year that played defensive line as well. And, uh, you know, all those guys were great players. But, uh, you know, we had, but once you get the players, you know, it's not just recruiting five-star players, the top players' position, develop them. We had good assistant coaches on the staff and a good head coach and good support staff. And uh, we were um, – 
um, making headway. So I, I was shocked when the first year I can remember walking into Ole Miss and this is no knock on anybody or it's not meant to be, but I can remember watching them run for the first time and, and saying, oh my gosh, I mean, we had better players at Arkansas State than we had at Ole Miss, yet we were having to play the SEC schedule. And I thought we did a great coaching job that year of winning just seven games because it it looked like, you know, you might only win two or three, but uh, <laughs> yeah. we were able to win seven that year. So um, you mentioned recruiting. Did you, as a coordinator, did you do a lot of recruiting? You know, uh, a lot of times the coordinators, everybody recruited on the staff, but you had, as a coordinator, you went and saw a lot of the different players that were trying to sign on defense or some of the top players I had in the area as well. But uh, I was not going out as much as some of the other guys was going out for obvious reasons. So the coordinators, you guys only kind of came in when you were needed? Well, I wouldn't say that. I mean, during the season, you have certain days mm -hmm. that you can go out, so many days that mm -hmm. you can go out during the season. Yeah. So after practice on Thursday, the assistants, the rest of the staff, besides the coordinators and the head coach, would go out and recruit. So, I mean, they're getting the heads up. And yeah. time-consuming-wise, uh, you know, you had to have your coordinators around your offense and defense. Somebody had to be there to lead them. So it was your offense and defensive coordinator, and I wasn't out in the fall until the season was over. And then when the season's over, it's full full bore for everybody. Yeah. And as a coordinator, a lot of times the assistants that are out there, they want you to, the coordinators, to come and visit their players. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're, in, you know, everywhere in Mississippi for a couple of days, and you might be in Washington, D.C. or California or, yeah. or New York. And that's the way it was. So you get spread kind of thin mm -hmm. at times. And, uh, uh, you know, you just do whatever you can to, to help get the best players as mm -hmm. a group, as a coaching staff. Yeah, so you retired in 2016, right? After 2016. That was right around when Ole Miss started to get in trouble a little bit, right? Well, uh, it had really gone on for several years back. Mm -hmm. You know, there was some stuff going on with – Houston staff academically, but uh, um, yeah, it was, gosh, I think after the second year we were here, mm -hmm. there started being allegations brought against Ole Miss and so forth, and I was fortunate personally because I was never interviewed by the NCAA, and uh, thankfully, I never was in my 38 years, but um, I really was not involved in any of that. Mm -hmm. uh, which I was fortunate not yeah. to. So was that more from the Houston Nut era than the Heat? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. I would say, um, you know, putting it fairly is that every university uh, tries to take it to the line in recruiting. And you don't, you can't control all your boosters. Um, you just can't do that. And it gets competitive, not just us in Mississippi State, but all the other schools, you're mm -hmm. trying to get the same type of players that those uh, schools are getting. And, uh, you know, possibly there was one or two guys that took it over the edge. I really don't know because I wasn't yeah. on the inside of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was unfortunate that uh, that we did get under, um, you know, those, those breaking of the rules and so forth. But, you know, all my years of coaching, I don't think that we did anything worse than I mean, that's not an excuse, but but uh, some schools get caught and some schools don't get caught. Yeah. So I'll put it like that. Yeah. So that didn't really have anything to do with you retiring? Like you were ready to retire? Before no. The, my wife and I uh, had talked about it for the last, I don't know, three years. Mm -hmm. And the uh, summer before that, we had decided that um, that was going to be it. It was 2016. Actually, I almost retired after the 2014 season. But... Uh, you know, we ended up being the number one defense in the nation that year, and I came back the next year. We go to the Sugar Bowl in 15, mm -hmm. and uh, probably if we wouldn't have had it down here in 16, I would probably kept going just yeah. just for the heck of it. But I'm I'm really glad that uh, we stuck with our decision to retire. Mm -hmm. 
So would you have tried to stay even when he was gone? Was like a would I stayed? Yeah. So say like you kept winning and winning in 2016, but like you oh let go. Would you if I was still on the staff, would I stayed? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure. Uh, Matt and I are good friends, and uh, uh-huh. and we were doing pretty good on defense. So I'm yeah. sure that uh, I probably would have stayed. Yeah. What do you think about him? Yeah, I, I really like him. I mean, uh, I didn't know Matt until I came to Ole Miss. I knew of him, but uh, really good guy and hard worker. Loves Ole Miss. Uh, he's been dealt a very difficult hand sure. uh, with all the things. What happens is. You know, it's obvious is that now, you know, you're missing a couple bowl games and you're not getting the same recruits that these other schools are getting. And people seem to think, well, we're off of probation and bang, we're going to be right back where we were. Well, it doesn't work like that because all those years you're uh, not getting the same kind of players that the other schools are getting. And I think Matt's absolutely the right guy for the job. And I think he'll do the best that he can do. And, uh, but I also know it's everybody wants it's fast food football. They want to win. They want to win that. Mm -hmm. So do you think, um, Hugh Freeze will ever be back in the SEC? Well, I don't know. Uh, that's a good question. I think Hugh will be back as a, at a power five school and, uh, whether it be in the SEC, I think at, Absolutely, it could happen, mm-hmm. uh, and it can happen fairly soon. Because he's at Liberty now, right? Yeah, he is. Um, so. My actually, uh, my son-in-law is his strength mm-hmm. coach at Liberty, yeah. and he, my son-in-law was also uh, obviously he's married to my daughter Haley, yeah. who was at CrossFit. You're yep. a CrossFitter, <laughs> owned the CrossFit. Yeah. <laughs> but um, anyway, they're up at Liberty, and uh, Dom. Uh, was the uh, assistant, the next guy in line, not the head strength coach, but the first assistant uh, mm-hmm. at Ole Miss uh, under Paul Jackson. And uh, he he went on with you just, late, I guess it was late December, early mm-hmm. January. So is there any circumstance that would bring you out of retirement? No, I can't think of one. Not I mean, at all. You know, you know my son's uh, the defense coordinator at Indiana. Yeah. He coaches. And uh, he was just named the defensive coordinator back in. Uh, Wait, he's in, wasn't he at South Alabama? Yeah, yeah. he he started out. Uh, he was a graduate assistant at several places, including here. Mm-hmm. And then he became the defensive coordinator at Eastern Illinois. Mm. And he was there for two years. And then he became the defensive coordinator, moving up the ladder to South Alabama, Division One school. And then he went to Indiana. Uh, the head coach in Indiana coached the linebackers for me here at Ole Miss, Tom Allen. Tom, that's another story, ended up being the head coach at Indiana, and he hires Kane to coach his linebackers last year, and then then he just promoted him to the defensive coordinator back in January. That's pretty big. Yeah, oh, no yeah. doubt. He's uh, <clears throat> Kane's third. My son is thirty-one years old, and he's. Uh, one time was the youngest coordinator in all of Division One football, and uh, I don't know if he still is or not, yeah. but he's pretty young to be, yeah. you know, Big Ten coordinator. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little different than you. You kind of stayed down in the SEC South, and he's up in the Big Ten now. Well, I mean, I had to work my way up. I mean, yeah. I was basically a <laughs> graduate assistant for almost five years if you want to count the restricted earnings coach and then Bemenji in Southwest Missouri and UNLV and before I ever got a chance to and Southern Mississippi before I ever got to go in the SEC so he made that jump pretty quick Mm -hmm. yeah that's that's really cool so what was the most difficult thing you had to deal with coaching like SEC players you know um probably Mm -hmm. I guess there's a couple things. One is that, you know, you're always trying to recruit the best players you can recruit and dealing with their feelings and competition and who's going to be the, get the playing time, if you will. And, you know, they're used to being the stars at their school and that's difficult on young people when they're yeah. coming up and they're used to being the star and, and all that stuff. And, uh, I'd say that's one of the most difficult things. And then the other thing is, I think in the last five or six years, the entitlement of some of the 
recruits that you got, the guys that thought they deserved it just because they were stars and all mm-hmm. that. And most of the time, most of the time, not all the time, when the players come in and they see the guys that are already there, the upperclassmen, mm-hmm. uh, the guys that have been redshirted, the development they've made, they already know the system. They know what's going to happen because they've been through it for several years. You know, those guys have an advantage. But those freshmen come in all wide-eyed and think they're going to start. Well, uh, every once in a while you'll get one that starts, but most of the time they get it real quick. Mm-hmm. There's, It's those few guys that they yeah. think they deserve it just because they were pretty good in high school. So what were you like as a coach? Were you like yelling and screaming all the time? Or? No. No, I mean, uh, that goes back to my high school coach. I mean, he explained things and usually did it with a smile on his face and mm-hmm. – you know, I always like to think of myself as uh, I could get my point across without raising my voice, and uh, I wasn't one of those guys that cussed on the field at them. I don't mm-hmm. think that there was a place for that in college athletics, my personal opinion. But uh, I like to think that I handled it just like I would my children. Mm-hmm. So you kind of wanted it to be when you said something, like people kind of could tell how you meant it? Yeah, I mean, you know, you can get your point across. you got to understand that, I kind of had an advantage because all of them want playing time and uh, it wasn't like a dictatorship because we all kind of decide who played it. But so the guys who listen, the guys who studied the game came in and watched filmed and tried to get ahead. were going to be the ones. So they made the decision who was going to play, not me. And, uh, but I was always explaining that to them up front, you know, mm-hmm. I, it'd be silly for me to, uh, play a guy that's not producing as much as one that is producing, and they're the ones that make that choice by their yeah. work ethic. Mm-hmm. So you uh, do you keep in touch with any of the old players? You know the what? Moments? There's uh, I see them around. Uh, you know they'll call every once in a while. I might call one of them. I saw yeah. Channing Ward the other day in uh, Walmart last week. I saw two guys when I was getting my phone replaced uh, at AT and T the other day, and. Um, there's several guys. I guess as I get older, I forget some of the names, but uh, usually they'll remind me real mm-hmm. quick, you know, who it is. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I still stay in contact with someone. You ever talked to, like, uh, Rob Candici? You know, I haven't talked to Robert since he's, he left. Oh, uh, wow. uh, when he when he left uh-huh. uh, Ole Miss, I have, I have not had any contact with him, and I'm not sure. You know, I was pretty close to his brother, too, and uh, I don't think I've talked to either one of them. But that's not unusual, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they got bigger, better and things than me. <laughs> yeah. That old man, they don't want to talk to you. But there's some that are. There's some, you know, everybody's got a different personality. And some of them, mm-hmm. you know, call you every once in a while and, yeah. you know, let you know what's happening. Mm-hmm. You, still, you still talk to Hugh? Uh, I talked to him about, I don't know, 10 days ago or something. Yeah. Uh, he used to call when he was here in... Uh, you know, to go fishing, we go out here on the lakes here and go fishing every once in a while. And he stayed pretty active. Um, he did call about 10 days ago. I don't remember what we discussed, but just stay in contact. Yeah. And then again, you know, my daughter and son-in-law are up there with yeah, me. So <laughs> when we go up to Virginia, uh, we'll, we'll get a chance to see him. So if he called you and said, I'm going to Ohio State. I want you to come with me. Would you go with me? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not a chance. I've, I've had several chances, and I'm not going to name names here, but I've mm-hmm. had several chances to go to some other schools, and I just uh, I don't want that anymore. I'm on to the next yeah. phase of my life, and uh, I've had several chances to be consultants at several places, and I just that's not what I want. Yeah. Enjoying the retired life. Yeah. I mean, we, we really do. I mean, uh, we went to seven of Kane's games last year mm-hmm. uh, up at Indiana, and we couldn't do that if we were coaching. And we have grandkids, and her parents are still alive in Colorado, and both of my parents were alive until last summer when my, my father passed away. So seeing family and all that stuff has been great. You noticing it's nicer to just sit back and watch the games? Yeah, I mean, there's no stress. <laughs> I mean, obviously, that's uh, it, it's a lot easier watching them. Now, I get intense a little bit. I mean, get a little stressed when Suns team's out there yeah. playing. And <laughs> if they're not winning, you want them to do well and all that mm-hmm. other stuff. So, uh, 
Uh, yeah, I still enjoy it, but I don't have to. I miss the competition on Saturday. Uh, I'd be lying if I said I didn't miss that, mm -hmm. but uh, the rest of it, we'll let them young guys handle that. Mm -hmm. So when are we going to get you in the gym? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's interesting because one of the reasons that I didn't do that after I retired was because I did that for so many years as a player, and I did it so many years, uh, you know, even as a coach and all that. And I thought, you know what? You might as well just let yourself go now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think it's impressive what you guys do. I, my wife still does it, and yeah. she really loves it. And she has, as you know, a couple friends that, uh, that she mm -hmm. does it with. And, uh, she she really enjoys it. And you can tell a difference too in her yeah. body. <laughs> Do you like watching it when you, and then you come in a little? Come yeah, I like little. watching her. I mean, she supported me all those years, so I like to come in, yeah. <laughs> watch her. You know, be winded and yeah. <laughs> all that other stuff. But yeah, I I do. I like watching all yeah, that. But you stuff. don't you don't see yourself ever coming in. I probably won't make it up. No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were going to ask the hard questions, Kyle. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, thanks for doing this with me. This is awesome. Oh, you're welcome. It's you're cool, welcome. To, uh, I enjoyed cool to learn it. a little bit about your career, and you've been everywhere. Yeah, so. I was really fortunate to have some of the people in my life that I had in my life, um, not just head coaches, but, um, you know, lots of friends over the years, mm -hmm. and a lot of them, most of them still coaching, so it's fun to watch them, too. Actually, one more thing. You did, you went to UNLV. Wow, what, when was that? That would have been... That was pretty early, wasn't it? 1992. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's Vegas, right? Yeah. What was it like living there? You know, um, I never really got to live there because I was in one of those situations where we got up and I had to be there at 6 in the morning. We usually didn't leave, leave there till midnight. So about all I did was sleep for four or five hours and go to the office and work. And uh, uh, my wife loved Las Vegas. We lived out a little bit in a town called Green Valley, which is about five miles, actually just a suburb of Las Vegas, and uh, had a great church there. But uh, we could get anybody in the country to come visit, but Simon was a different deal. Yeah, I just, I just always wonder about, because I never really hear about yeah. people living there. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it was, it was a nice place, you know, to be. I mean, it was uh, sun, no humidity. I mean, yeah. but there was some serious heat, but. I never really got to enjoy Las Vegas like people think of Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, but we've been back a couple of times, and it's fun. Yeah. Very cool. Well, yeah, thanks again for doing this with me. You're welcome. This is awesome. Thank you for listening today, and I hope you all enjoyed this show. We'll see you next time on the Up Before You podcast. Have a great day. Yeah, buddy. <laughs>